Today we're at the Bay Street Passive House. Want to know how to heat and cool a passive house? Stay tuned and we'll take you through it. Passive house is an energy standard for all types of buildings, not just houses, and not just single family houses, multifamily buildings, as well as commercial buildings and industrial buildings, warehouses, even the smallest of buildings like tiny houses. How do we know what a passive house is? Well, it's really characterized by some key elements. The first is highly efficient windows, windows that are often triple pane, super energy efficient, don't let a lot of light in in the summertime and don't let a lot of uh, heat out in the winter time. Additionally, a lot of insulation. And insulation is dependent, how much insulation is dependent on where you live. In the Bay Area, we have to use a lot less insulation than somebody in Toronto, Canada. And that is all determined by the calculations that are done, which uh, for Passive House are called PHPP, or the Passive House Planning Package. Now on a project like this at the Bay Street Passive House, this project is 960 square feet. It is in a temperate climate near the ocean and the heating and cooling loads for this house are fairly small. We have actually insulated it to a level of a little bit more uh, cold climate. And we have an R27 floor, R27 to R30 walls, and an R60 to R64 roof. The air ceiling is one air change per hour or less. Uh, and we are really focusing on making this an exemplary project. Now, not just for the energy efficiency, a lot of times in this part of the uh, country in the state, we can leave our windows and doors open six, seven months of the year and be totally comfortable. But we live next to a busy road across the street from another place that produces a lot of smells that we don't really wanna be a part of. And we wanna make sure that this house is super quiet. We're sitting right next to this busy road you can't really hear anything inside. And all the people that have been coming and working here are really telling us, wow, it's so quiet in here, we can't even hear the road. So besides the energy efficiency, Passive House is about building incredibly important, sorry, incredibly efficient, quiet, functional, durable, and cheap to live in homes. Now, on a house like this, and it's a fairly small house at 960 square feet, how do we heat and cool that? Well, if you just ask a standard HVAC or heating and cooling subcontractor to come, they're gonna give you a, a rule of thumb, like you need three tons to heat and cool this house. Well, we know a ton is 12,000 BTUs, and a standard house uses about two to three tons per thousand square feet. So this house, you know, you could say it's two to three tons. Well. We've actually done the calculations for this project. It's less than half of a ton. And in fact, this house can be heated and cooled with one uh, heat pump system. Now, that one heat pump system is actually located above me. And that heat pump system is called a mini split. And what it does is it takes heat from outside the house and it runs it through, it consolidates it into a refrigerant, and then it runs it up into this fan coil up above us. Now, the cover is not on this fan coil because we're in the middle of sheetrock, but this fan coil will then produce enough heat for the entire house. This one tiny little furnace, so this is the effectiveness of your entire furnace system. The unit that's outside that collects the heat is effectively the air conditioner. And so this entire little thing here, which is about 12 inches tall, three feet wide, and about 12 inches wide, is the entire heating and cooling system for this 960 square foot house. Now, we don't need, this is actually a 12,000 BTU mini split. We need 6,000 BTU for this house. Now, we actually have other heating and cooling units in this house that are specifically for rooms. It's honestly probably overkill, but the clients wanted more control in the rooms. In the past, this house had had a lot of problems with overheating. It obviously didn't have any insulation, so that contributed significantly to the overheating issues, but it's also facing south, and the majority of the, of the south-facing side of the house has a lot of windows and doors. So the clients wanted to be super careful. We also wanted this house to be an example of what a passive house could be. This system is so large that it has, actually has trouble getting down to that heat output called turndown capacity, or its ability to down-regulate from 100% 
to like 50% or 25% to handle what are gonna be the heating and cooling loads in this house. Now, when we have this unit upstairs or in the ceilings, we have different types of units for other portions of the house. Now this unit can only sit in flat ceilings because there's a potential for it to have condensation issues. It actually has a little pump and a drain pipe and that drain pipe goes outside so that any condensation that occurs in this unit gets pumped outside. In addition to that, the only things that go from inside to outside are two tiny little pipes that are wrapped in insulation. So the pipes themselves are about that big and the insulation makes them about an inch wide. So we're going to go outside now and we're going to look at that and we're going to see what we have to do in order to set up these systems. So now we're outside at the place where our heat pump is going to be located. All of these line sets, so there's eight different line sets and each one is paired with a refrigerant line, a liquid refrigerant line and a gas refrigerant line. And one goes in and one goes out and that's how they transfer the heat from the heat pump unit which is about this big and sits outside on the ground into those individual units that heat and cool those spaces. And those individual units are individually controlled. They're different zones. So one can be heating and all the rest can be off. Now all of these wires or all of these copper lines get set down to one individual unit. So we don't have four independent units. We have one unit that controls all four. And they have a line set, so a set of, of copper pipes, and then one drain, and then one control line that controls that individual unit. So it turns it on when the uh, thermostat turns it on, it turns it off, turns it on low or hot, they're infinitely controllable. And so because that unit sits outside and it's fairly small, it's actually really quiet, it doesn't vibrate the house, and it doesn't take any valuable space inside the house to run all that, that ducting or that big furnace system, it's outside. And lastly, the mini splits don't have any ducts. So they're a lot easier to install. They're a lot less space consuming. So we don't have ducts running through the crawl space where termites or bugs or other bugs or rats can get to them. We don't have them in the attic where they take up all the attic space and they exclude the location of, of insulation in the attic or they get stomped on by somebody trying to go uh, get something out of the attic. They're highly protected. So this entire system is not only more uh, efficient but less expensive to install and less expensive to run. If you're interested in learning more about the mini split systems or about the Bay Street Passive House or Passive House in general, hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way. Passive House is characterized by a few really important um,